we go back to um, the light bulb moment that you kind of said this isn't going to be on the shelves when of like it's not going to be the uh, ubiquitous light bulb mm -hmm. um, what happened there how did that come about and how do you, did you identify what kind of product it would be um, well we had to you know sort of imagine for, so you know we've got this sort of objective which is you know we need to get product out there that means that people have a, a kind of compelling alternative to incandescent. So at the moment, the choice is really horrible, uh, you know, energy efficient bulbs with which aren't really designed, they're just utilitarian, uh, you're, or incandescents, which are really charming and lovely, but also abusive from an energy consumption point of view. If you want to drive people in that direction, you have to create something attractive, but you have to create something that, that's also affordable because it sort of defeats the point if it's too, if it's the price is too high. So you kind of have to engage with mass production in order to answer that question. Um, so, so that the, you know the whole the whole sort of you know gearing and, and pathway then was was in pursuit of you know trying to meet a market that was big enough to support and sustain and grow that proposition. And to get there, then obviously we had to go. A, we had to go to China because that's the only place you can produce light bulbs at that at that quantity and reach that kind of price point. You know, and then everything is really in, in, in pursuit of that. So, you know, in terms of manufacturing, we, you know, we're not just coming with designs and getting the manufacturer to produce it. We're going in there because we can't afford to set up our own lines. We can't afford to set up our own factories. So we're going into existing factories. You know, somebody's going over there with a the camera and documenting all the steps in the process, which, you know, we're, we're creating a design that is literally going to drop into an existing line without disruption. So things like we had a, you know, a couple of designs just fell off, you know, fell off the, the, um, the track because the way that the phosphor is applied into the tubes, it, it needs to be dried on a, on a dryer. And we had some, some sort of forms that meant that unless you could twist it on the dryer, it wouldn't, the, the fossil wouldn't run out. So those got rejected. <coughs> but were these, did you bring prototypes there or did you bring drawings? No, so we're bringing drawings. So this, drawings this is still, this, you know, this, is, this is quite a way back. Uh, you know, this is like 2000, it's sort of eight, nine, ten. <coughs> You know, now we would now we regularly because you could, you know there's obviously loads of substrate, you know loads of materials to, to print with. So you know the, the actually the transparent uh, <coughs> materials are actually getting really good now. So we print it. You know we print, if we're doing an optical section or something like that, we'll print it and you can get like really good. But uh, this time it was technical. It was basically technical drawings, um, and then we'd get samples back and then. And what were the <coughs> minimum numbers you had to deal with? So uh, ten thousand, so, which That's is still yeah sort of. You know, sometimes you get depending depending what you're making. It's obviously the MOQs are d d to make, but I mean, it's at the bottom end, and it's still it's still the kind of the one of the one of the really d challenging parts of running our business. We're still generally th the lowest MOQs of any of the commissioners. You know, the factories they're making t you know hundreds of thousands. So, you know, we've we've got the hardest questions to we've got the hardest problems to solve because we're always trying to push it, um, but we've actually got the, the few you know the least rewards for them. So it's like it's always a kind of you know. Uh, and, and we also, with the, with the phones, we went directly to the factories. Um, but we knew because the, the lighting industry would operate at such volumes, we just couldn't do it on our own. So we, we, we to get it off the ground, we, we decided we, the, the only way we'll do it is by finding a manufacturing partner. So we went and knocked on a load of doors of the sort of second tier. Who, who was having these conversations? So it, was that you going? Yeah, so it was me. So was you my, were learning the manufacturing of... of well, it was my business partner and I and our ch chairman who's... Uh, uh, He's, he was one of the kind of key guys in, in the Games Workshop and, and scaling Games Workshop, which is like fantasy gaming thing, which has a hardware dimension, a, 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 a kind of brand dimension, and then a big retail operations side. So we'd kind of been through that process before. So we, we were cooking it up together. Michael George, my, uh, my business partner, was basically the ops director. So he was running around China getting, putting it all together. And then we had an inter, we had a, a basically a kind of part time moonlighting designer who's now, our, our, no, no, engineer who's now our, our engineer. In, and uh, in how many do you produce now of these? I don't know, actually, I don't scale. Uh, tens of that. We've done half a million things. Quite a lot of them are light bulbs. Really, like 60% of that's light bulbs and then shades and accessories. I can't, it's, it's on a big spreadsheet somewhere, but, um, but yeah, quite, quite, quite a few. I'd like, probably do a few, you know, a couple hundred thousand things this year. I should have an answer to that, shouldn't I? No, no, it's just the scale. It's kind of from that original mission, the prototyping, to get to that point. But we're still, it's still too small. You know? yeah. It's still too, I was just uh, chatting to, to Michelle before. It's like, it's not in the sweet spot yet, which is the challenge for us, because it's, the thing is, 
the thing is really conceived to operate at scale. Mm. And it's a bit like, I mean, I, I, t I totally agree with you about the kind of this obsession about scale, 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 in the, you know, and that stuff. But there is, a, for, for us, there's a sort of sense to it because it's like, you know, you can see how Tesla are doing it, but obviously with like billions behind them. They, when they get the gigafactory online, then it means that they can, they can really compete in, in the marketplace. And then, you know, they're not selling one for every 20 petrol cars. They're selling one for one or, you know, it starts to it starts to make it really really credible. So it's like that's 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 where we're you know we're on a sort of slower path because we just but don't that, have as that. an as an art student. When's the first time you came across this idea of um, break even and fulfillment and just all, I've, I've, I came straight out of art school and actually all my mates did like proper you know proper uh, you know studies and I did art because I was just I was much more excited by it and I thought I'd gain more by just doing something that excited me than doing something that didn't excite me. It was as simple as that. Um, but as soon as I rolled out of art college, I'd, you know, one of the things I picked up was Photoshop. So we, we got, you know, this, I was in there, uh, 90 to uh, 94. We had our fir the first Macs turned up, learned Photoshop because I was doing like photo compositing and I thought it would be better, more elegant to sort of, into, you know, to do it properly. And then when I rolled out of college, I got a job in the, what was the nascent um, uh, kind of interactive, you know, communications world of which nobody was qualified. So I was as qualified as anybody else. And actually very quickly got into, into sort of, you know, making business. You know, making our first business in in uh, '96, and then through that, just just getting a sort of sense of as, you know, as soon as you're entrepreneurially engaged in anything, then it just completely changes your mindset because your you know your creative instincts and your creative indulgences are related to whether you're going to have money to survive and whether your business is going to survive and grow or not. So yeah. it just completely cha it completely changes your, your the way that you think about it. And actually, that does it does map to any other business really because okay. you know you always the, the tensions are always between you know I want to do something really cool and exciting but we need to make it work as business